need to cooperate, to collaborate, to be in partnership with other beloveds. That's how I came to feel and experience the urgency that is in this chapter by CD in the music, the music of soul on brotherhood in God. Sorry. The necessity to focus and actualize in order, his order to see only the gifts that each of us carry, the gifts of the beloveds. Love the beloveds for those gifts because only through those gifts I can actualize myself, my giving, my service to all that is His. This beautiful creation, as well as the needy, as well as the creation which is in pain and poverty, So I see this clear message in this chapter and I see that Allah is asking us to love and give and I see the teachings in this chapter as a clear directive both in terms of inner walking as well as outer manifesting. So I thought we take our time and I hear that we can share with each other your take and your experiences in trying to apply this chapter, the teaching in this chapter, in your lives as well as in your doings and your practices. How do you see it as the basis of the ground of our existence, past CD? The need, the need that we have to connect to each other, to be united, and to see each other free from the pictures and see, as Sidi says, see the qualities, see that in the other that we feel attracted to, that we feel the love for, and relate to each other in that way. Uh, so the intention, my intention is to hold this time together as a soft bed, meaning asking you to share what you experience uh, from this reading of this chapter on, on uh, brothers in love, brothers in God. So would you help me open the 
open the discussion for inclusion of beloved. Yes, of course. Anybody that would like to uh, converse, dialogue with Rita, if you're on a tablet or a computer, just uh, unmute yourself, or if you're on a phone, hit star six. Do not lose this face. If you lose it, you lose everything. When you do not keep your brothers and sisters in your heart, you lose this face. This is what I mean. Keep your brothers and sisters special in your heart and give them love and peace and help and mercy. This is the meaning of brothers in God. This is what every student needs in this way. If you did not, you did not have a brother or sister to help you in the way you would not reach and you would lose your time. God asks you, why did you lose my time by losing your brothers and sisters? Anyone that would like to ask, that would like to speak. Anything you wish to share. Everyone needs this light. Don't forbid anyone to sit near you. Give him light. Give him mercy. Give him peace. Be a holy tree. This is what I want from you. To be the teacher from this way, be a rose so that everyone can see this rose. This is the rose of truth. Do you know what I mean about this rose? This rose is your brother and this rose is your sister. When you know what I mean by your brothers and sisters. My son and my daughter, listen to what I say. You need to live for your mirror all the time. What is your mirror? Your brother is your mirror because you can see his picture in your face. You can see your face only in this mirror. Don't Break the mirror, but, I, but keep it inside your soul and be polite with it. Any question that you might have? A sobet is a conversation among friends, and we have a very special friend with us today in Rita, someone who was very close to CD for very many years. So any, any question that you might have or anything that you would like to say, feel free to unmute yourself and speak. Assalamu alaikum Rita. Alaikum salam. I have, uh, it's Abdullah Hauk. I don't know if you can see me. No, I don't. That's okay, Abdullah. Yeah. Salam. Salam. We have a neighbor, our next door neighbor, who is a bully to us in many ways. And I have a difficult time 
inside myself, seeing the face of Allah in him. I know that neighbors have rights over us and that we strive to see brotherhood with everybody that Allah puts in front of us. And I also understand that there is a teaching about oppressors and not making them to be protectors over you and not giving, giving them um, from yourself if they're just going to stretch their hands out against you in, in evil. And can you help me understand and distinguish between this teaching about being the mercy and seeing the face of Allah in your brother or sister and facing people who are oppressors? It is important that we study and understand the darkness we are in, the darkness of this particular time that we are in. In other words, the constructs of this whimsical mentality has built a world in which almost everything is being run by a program. And our brothers and sisters have become automatons reacting all the time according to those programmings, people all around us. This, this ignorance, this darkness is so thick. We have beloveds, brothers, sisters, who, who actually in every way are behaving self-destructive. They vote against their own interests. They eat food that destroys them. They, they have no access to the happiness of giving, the happiness of sharing. They're abusive. It's a very, and, and they're very much in control. There is a, an economic system which overrules everything else and runs everything. And everybody has, is a slave in that system. And those who have power and money they are also slave to that system, but they maintain that system. So, in this situation, uh, any kind of aggressive response to oppressors is practically dysfunctional. Plus the fact that our beloved city, our Shadali way, is teaching us this inner secret that there is actually a wisdom, a loving wisdom, a merciful wisdom behind all that is happening.
And furthermore, it teaches us that we cannot deal in any way with the darkness except through mercy, except with love. So in terms of your particular experience with this beloved, with this neighbor, you have to make the judgment whether there is a point of entry where you can share with him a taste of mercy. You have to, you know, you have to find a way to assess if there is any room, any way that you could approach him and give to him, give to him your, your love, your care, your hospitality, your deeper understanding, your affection. And if you don't see that possibility, which is, which is quite likely, then you have to protect yourself. You, you have no other option than, and if that protection means that you, you, you stay out of his way and or you know whatever practical and for me to advise you on that i need to know more about the practical aspects of the relationship to be able to counsel you as to what could be done but there may even be a loving message in that in the presence. In my own life, I experienced when I, when I happened to be in a very dangerous situation when the revolution happened in my home country, I was persistent that I'm going to stay and, and continue my service there. And I received a threat. And because of that threat, I, I immediately left and escaped and I'm sorry. That very threat saved my life because if I had stayed, I would have been ruined. So there may be a message in this, I mean, but I, I can't give you, I can't tell you what Allah is asking you to do. I'm sorry. I... Thank you Other, yeah. for that response. I, I understand that. Um... Um. We attempt to give dates when they throw stones as right. best we can, and we need to have wisdom at the same time. Yes. So the point of the wisdom, what that wisdom is, is for you to in inquire within as well as inquire outside what the roots are, what the causes are. That's where the wisdom comes. In other words, innerly inquiring as to why Allah has put this neighbor next to me. And outerly being able to see what it is that is disturbing to this person. Being inquisitive, paying attention paying attention to that situation and finding out if there is a way 
that you have access to giving him mercy and, and light and understanding and friendship. My hope was to hear from you regarding the significance of the chapter on brothers in God and, and, and hear how everyone feels about that. How, how do we feel about that? The importance of uh, maintaining our loving relationships, the importance of seeing the beauty in one another and seeing what Allah has put in each, each person and connecting to actualize our visions in a cooperative way in actualizing our giving, our service, our mercy. If you'd like to respond, please unmute yourself. If you're on a cell phone, hit star six. If you're on a, a tablet or device, just unmute your microphone. Hey there, this is, this is Zuleika from Minnesota. Thank you so much for being here. It's, it's really an honor to have you with me. Um, one of the things that, um, you know, in reading that chapter, I mean, it just really reinforced for me, um, you know, that there really is no separation, that really um, we are as much each other as we are ourselves, and we're as much, you know, and, and, and it lies in all of us. Um, and I know for myself, I've certainly, through my community and through classes I've been involved with, received a lot of love and mercy and compassion um, and assistance. And so I am very, very grateful for that. But also being um, sometimes perhaps a too perceptive person. Um, there's also, and I hope you maybe can address this, but it, it seems to me, or I seem to run into um, awareness of a lot of brothers and sisters judging and comparing um, and um, You know, even sometimes in our leadership, it filters down that there's conflicts or there's um, people are judging one leaders, judging other leaders, that sort of thing. And I, I, my question is, how are we, you know, in the Tarika to respond to that or to, to work with that or to help or assist with that in some way? Thank you, beloved. I really feel in order to overcome all these challenges, we need to move forward from teachings, from learning, and from understanding to doing to actualizing our mercy in our doings. And when we begin to do 
in the process of doing we realize how badly we need each other and we realize how we actually complement one another. So in order to do, what, what do we need in order to actualize a doing? First, first thing we need is a vision, a vision a, the, the vision is in the gifts that city has given us to further what he has already given us, to take care of the projects that he has given us, or to actualize in a new field our felt response to the pain that we perceive. And in these response, that's, that's where we engage in co collaborative work in trying to find partnerships and to discover how we actually complete each other and that Sidi, it is gifts to us once we, once we stay in our hearts to actualize our doings, to flow in the current of mercy. We need each other's support. We need help from each other. We need this togetherness that this togetherness is not just a theoretical thing. It's a very practical thing. We need it for our spiritual survival and our actualization and our inner joy and our experience of the garden, including our experience of walking, inner walking. There is there is a great deal of help in the right kind of association, in intimate association, the way CD is giving it to us, the way he is describing it. So when we, I mean, even when we see conflicts, instead of reacting to that conflict, we need to practice the teachings. We need to inquire as to what the source of that conflict is. Why, and, and have the courage to communicate with one another and face each other and really open our hearts to one another and find the roots of it and resolve those roots in, in accordance to the, our point of reference. Our point of reference in resolving any of these is, is within, within the teachings that Siddhi has given us and, and the practice of uh, dealing with each other with with trust, with open heart, and, and recognizing that we depend on each other and we need each other. That's, that's very beautiful, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anyone else who would like to? Anyone who wishes to share their realization in terms of 
the importance of brothers and sisters in our actual practical lives post CD. And I really feel the need to hear what you have to share. Assalamu alaikum, Rida. My name is Salim. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Salim. Um. <laughs> When I first came to this path, I was kind of, well, I was just in a lot of pain and a lot of, I had a lot of struggles with family and vocation and um, I thought that I had a vision, you know, you talk about vision and, and I thought that I had a vision and once I got a taste of what was possible through healing, then I, I thought I had a different vision. Eventually, CD made me a teacher. And then I had a whole different vision. <laughs> so my vision kept changing. And I found over the years, it, because of my situation in various various ways, it's just been difficult for me to physically come and be a part of the community. But there have been a few individuals who have always been there, who've always answered their phone, who've always been willing to meet with me at odd hours or talk with me in the middle of the night. And as, I, as, as my vocation and my family have progressed, uh, um, I, have, uh, I have some, I have a confidence in my heart. You know, the, the image of the rose that, that you read about and being that rose to the people around you, it, it just really strikes a chord with me because I know that I am that in my workplace. I know that the people around me look to me for inspiration and in some ways for um, support and guidance, or even just that there's some light in the room, that there's somebody whose heart has light. And um, I know that I wouldn't, I, I know that I couldn't be where I am without CD and without these people in Artarka who just keep showing up. And even though I can't be here very often to see my brothers and sisters in Artarka, I have to ask myself the question, who is my brother? And I believe I see him and I see my sisters every day. Uh, and it's just, but but I know that this is my root, and this, this Tarika is, is who I hold in my heart every night. Beautiful. I thought that I would somehow, some, I thought that someday I would be a teacher of some kind, that I would share teachings, you know, see these teachings, but I now see that may never be the case, but I'm sharing them every day, everywhere I go. We teach with our doings and actual teaching, like teaching in a classroom is a form of doing but you can be teaching by the way you are in the company of, of your colleagues at work or with the acts of mercy that you share, that you give. 
A rose, one of the qualities of the rose is its aroma that is so penetrating and so free and so subtle and it carries, it carries nature's, God's loving, feeding vibrations in a very subtle, beautiful way. And, and it, it penetrates, freely distributes itself amongst all, the, all those in, within its ecosystem. So I'm curious about your, your change of vision and if you, have, if you try to actualize, if you took your vision to the next step, if the vision had enough light in it and enough love in it to generate the birth of what we call Hema. Did you have Hema to pursue one of your visions? And what was your experience then? You know, the pursuit of the vision, it takes me deeper into my practice. And my understanding of that is somewhat related to my name. Salim. I, the pursuit is, is of a more holistic, my, my vision is of a more holistic relationship to Allah. And, and where, the way, where I find myself in the world is looking at people who have a tremendous amount of suffering. I work in the hospital, in a hospital system, and both the system and the patients are equally diseased. Um, yes, very true. So my, my passion is around bringing the presence of God into those rooms. Whether it's an administrative meeting or it's a patient room, um, I find myself leaning heavily on the Tauba and, and other healing practices in order to stay in order to stay grounded, in order to stay honest in those places. And there's really, it's not my words that get me through the meeting. It's just being in my heart and staying focused on Allah. Um, you know, honestly, the, I was laid off from my job in the hospital last December. Um, and the vision moved into another position in the hospital, <laughs> in the same hospital, but this time bringing spirit, doing spiritual care. And I think that it strikes me that one of the gifts of our Tarika is the way that we can provide presence. There's a ministry of presence that you are offering to us right now. Um, and I think everyone on this call can understand that and feel that and probably offers that in, in their lives. Um, and I, when you say vision, I think, well, what are we going to do? Okay, how are we going to organize? How are we going to band together? What action are we going to take? And in my heart, I know that, that, that being present to one another is, is one of the greatest ministries that we can do and to being present to those in our lives. Right. Right. We can talk separately about the seed of the vision and how it naturally grows in its proper ecosystem. But what you're sharing with us is just beautiful. You're actualized. You are experiencing exactly what we're talking about. You are giving the mercy and the mercy is feeding you and you're dealing with the darkness. You... 
in a very merciful way, beautiful way. Yeah, I, I really believe that these kind of experiences that you share, that many of our beloveds are having, need to be shared. These are, these are part of CD's garden. This is what we need to hear and appreciate and have reason to love one another and support each other. I guess if there's, I guess if there's one thing on my heart to say about, especially to Zuleika's question about moving forward, I guess it, what strikes me is that when I see pain, something painful happening in another person, I ask if they need something, or we can ask, you know, if they need something, and tend to our own, my own pain that that brings up. Um, but it's really just reaching out and asking this question that you're asking us, Rita. What is it? What are? What is your experience? Can you tell me about it, so I can help you hold it? You don't have to hold it alone. We're so here. We are looking at each other across the TV screen. You know, we can hardly be in the same room anymore in this studio, <laughs> and yet we're more connected than ever. And I think it's just finding ways that I can say, I'm here for you. I'm here. Call me. Beautiful. You are tasting and sharing the taste of Ra. Ra, which is the root of Rahman, Rahim, which is the quality that Prophet salam carries all the time. That's part of his light. Is the heart, the feeling in the heart. This is what, this is what CD touched in us. This is what CD opened in us. This is the common reality we each share in this community. And in that reality, we discover our brotherhood. And you're opening your heart and saying, I am here for you, I love you. And I wanna to give to you. Thank you. We have a few more minutes with Rita. Anyone else that would like to share? Now is your time. Unmute yourself. If you're on a phone, hit star six. Assalamu alaikum, Rita. This is Rahima. Alaikum assalam, Rahima. Um, so, while you were describing about applying these teachings, see these teachings into our daily life, um, I found that very helpful, and I believe that in applying those teachings is where our nafs die, like for real. Once you're like applying them, that's when the nafs die. Um, you know. Before, when Siri was alive, I could take like these big leaps of dying. And since Siri passed, I'm still taking them and going to Allah. But I feel 
more fearful of the direction. You know, before I could just text my guide and my guide could tell me, you know, like steer in this direction and will set my being, you know, right towards Salah. But now, you know, I, I've tried to be very active in my community. I try to do the right city's teachings and do my practices, but I've, I still miss it, like the transmission or the impulse, you know, to be like educated, like in Islam, you know, I, I didn't grow up with this faith, so it's all new to me, but like, you know, like to get the manners of the prophets and, you know, this is, this is all like um, something that I, that I wish to absorb, that I wish to live in my daily life. I just don't know how, you know, like, you know, I don't have the mirror of the guide anymore. So I think I'm a little bit um, lost in, you know, in that finding. Okay. Do you feel, do we, do we feel that our father, Sidi, did not leave us enough inheritance? Or is it that he did leave us enough inheritance in his books, in his memory of his examples of living, in his beloveds, in, in the beloveds that are in our community? in the projects he gave us and in the understanding that we can access by delving more deeply into the teachings. And is it possible that he gave us enough, but what we don't have anymore is simply a necessity for us to grow up. Meaning that the kind of motherly, loving care that we received while Sidi was alive, that particular quality, that particular care, I, I empathize with you. You miss that. But it, can you see that he, he didn't leave us lacking? He gave us everything we need. Just when you, do, don't you, don't have you had the experience of missing him and feeling frustrated and feeling bereaved and opening the book and he tells you exactly what you need to hear? and to grow up and to step and and the fana that you're talking about it has a cumulative effect in other words every every time we open and we read and we surrender and we accept we are we are taking a step in the right direction towards towards the reality the beautiful reality which calls for our surrender and for now. So what do you say to that? Yes, I think, I think that's very true about the part that you're saying, you know, about growing up and, and trusting, you know, in the surrender that we find that we have, I mean, that we do have everything. We do, we do have, honestly, we do have everything. Yeah, and the message for today's talk is that amongst all the gifts we receive, the ground of all these gifts, the base for all of these gifts is our association, is our intimacy, is our brotherhood, is our unity is having each other. 
at least that's what I'm getting from CD. I, and I'd like you to, to share your views on it. Yes. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, beloved. I am. Um, I've been given the um, gift of working with a group of people, which I've been wanting for a while, so that I could develop more cooperation. And I have two things going on in that situation. One of them is that having a hard time maintaining friendliness because. Sometimes when I look at people, all I can see is a time when I wasn't as nice to them as I could have been. And uh, so that's been hard to get past, to just be present with the present moment and just be nice. It's <laughs> uh, a somewhat stressful situation. And the other part of that is that there are, among the people that work there, some are Muslim and some are not. Some are sort of traditional Muslim that come from traditional Muslim families. And I'm really struggling because I feel like I don't, a lot of times I don't feel unity with them. And I, and I think, you know, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> so I'm having a hard time with that. I apologize. I didn't get everything you said. There was an echo when you were speaking. Can, can someone, but I can try to respond in, on the basis, on the partial understanding, but if someone could summarize, repeat what you said. I'm sorry, is that better? Yes, it, that's better. That's better. But, but in summary, could you, your difficulty, your challenge is, is a community issue, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yes, yes, beloved. So what is the nature of that challenge? Um, well, there's two different challenges and it, some of them are, some of them are, some of my challenges with, with, uh, people who are not Muslim. And so I sort of, I don't know, I don't expect anything of them, I guess. And then, but some of my challenges with people who are Muslim, but don't know see these teachings just because of, you know, not having been exposed to them. And I, I have tried to talk to them about and have even handed over some of his writings and it just um like there's not a click there's not like this click happening and i don't i don't know what to do about that i guess there's nothing i can do about it yes yeah. what you can do what about can this do about is is understand the nature of this darkness the nature of our conditioning is that we want the fruit before we show care and attention for the root. Mm -hmm. We are all conditioned that way. We want a quick, quick fruit and disregard the root. This is the nature of our materialistic world. And what I, so understanding that and staying, searching for the roots, staying with the roots, staying within your own heart, not making separation, not making separation between Muslim, non-Muslim, looking at them at the human beings and and speaking from your heart the qualities that you carry 
and giving to them and finding the way to connect with them. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Thank that's, you. That's, that's all we can, you know, but as we do that, as we do that, Allah will give us more light, more clarity. But we, you know, judging people just because they are not Muslim or they are Muslim and they don't, it, it won't help us. It, it's, it, it takes us to, to fear. It takes us away from our heart. That's true. Yeah. So be be merciful. Be merciful with them. Be loving. Practice that. And and really appreciate Sidi more by reading more. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Inshallah. So, Rita, we're a few minutes past the top of the hour. Are there any final words you'd like to leave us with before we uh, end for today? Uh, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm sorry I wasn't well prepared, but I'm, I appreciate getting to know more about the hearts of beloveds and i hope that we can continue communicating somehow and uh, and drinking from the same fountain and we thank you for giving your time with us and for us today we treasure you as a jewel of the tarika and we are very appreciative of having you with us thank you brother